Hey guys, welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, for being subscribed. If you're not, hit that button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like button. It's like walking in a room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into this beautifully honest reaction. All right. I listened to the interview that Destiny Payton did on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I have a link to the full in the description if you have not checked it out yet. Uh, For those of you who are not familiar with the Dear Future Wifey podcast, I wasn't really familiar with it either prior to the Derek Jackson wife. I'm not going to say ex-wife because they are not divorced yet, but Derek Jackson wife, Denea Jackson interview that went viral. It was a two-part and I talked about that and I haven't watched many of his interviews, but I tried to watch the Derek Jackson interview that he did and I just couldn't get through it because one, I I can't I, I, I can't sit and listen to Derek Jackson and take him seriously because I just feel that he is a pathological liar. Anyone that could live a life having a career uplifting women while pretty much tearing down one woman's life that he has been married to for all of these years. I could never listen to anything that he said, but I was never a follower of his anyway. And I already felt like a lot of the stuff that he was spewing was BS in the first place. So that's, you know, neither here nor there. But Destiny Payton's interview, I'm going to say that it gave me, and I feel like a lot of people who listen to it, a whole other perspective on this woman that a lot of us who watched the show Love and Marriage Huntsville did not get from her. And seeing that she had been on this show for so many years and all a lot of us really saw of her was someone who was really, in the in the beginning, what it looked like, really riding for Melody and to a fault. And I wouldn't say to a fault, but I would say doing too much because the way it looked, it just really looked like to me, sharing my beautifully honest opinion of her was that it just looked like she was someone that was just doing it up for the cameras. And it was just like she was just doing, you know, too much when it came to her friendship with Melody. And then when the when the friendship deteriorated it looked like she was trying to be messy and destroy the girl's reputation by saying some of the things that she said and done on the show where it pertains to melody so it just made me look at her you know i wouldn't even say differently it just made me look at her like what in the heck is really going on right so you know with that being said She didn't share a whole lot about her own personal experiences being on the show. So it just made it hard for people to really connect with her and see what was really real. And it allowed some people, not everyone, but a lot of people to make assumptions about her relationship and her marriage when it came to her ex-husband. And so I wasn't one of those people that made comments about her relationship with her ex-husband and and making insinuations about why he filed for divorce and and her being pregnant at the time and just having a baby and like I because to me it just looked like there's something wrong with a man who could do something like that to a woman that just had a baby unless she just was so scandalous that maybe the baby wasn't his or you know he found out she was I I don't know I'm just trying to come up with some scenarios that could be like so egregious that it's like he's like I need to get out of this and just my opinion it just was not looking like he was a very stand up guy. And I knew that I know that there were a lot of people that felt like, oh, he was so successful and he does this. He's he, you know, he does that and he is whatever in his career and he has a security clearance. 
Man, look, I I know all about security clearances. My husband is a veteran. He had top secret clearance, Um, still does. He's just not, you know, he's a veteran now. He's not in the military anymore serving and has been a, a government contractor as well. So I'm very familiar with having a clearance that you need to have your your name and your credit and all of that stuff clear. I completely understand that. I'm not unaware of it. But to me, just based on the trash guys that we have seen that have been portrayed to be men and married men at that on this show, Love and Marriage Huntsville, he just was not looking good in my eyesight. But I know that there are a lot of people that tried to make him look like this stand up individual and they wanted to base Destiny's character off of this friendship that played out on this reality show with Melody. I may not have cared for some of the things that she said and done, but I would not have based what she went through in her marriage off of how she was reacting to these situations and these scenarios, whether you want to call them setups or meetups or whatever, on Love and Marriage Huntsville between her and Melody to make it seem like she deserved to be treated the way that she was treated in her marriage. I would never say anything like that. And I don't even believe Melody would say that either. Okay. So with all of that being said, I want to play a little bit of this interview for you guys, because when the news came out that she was arrested, I discussed that a little bit and I shared my personal opinion and I felt, and I still feel this way. I'm not saying that it's right for anyone to use anyone's personal information without their knowledge, without an agreement or whatever, and cause someone's name and credit to to get messed up. But I was one of the people that said, like, I felt like this could have been handled a different way. And how do we really even know the full details of what happened? Because there's just been a lot of speculation. There has been no concrete evidence of her doing what a lot of people have accused her of doing to cause her to be arrested. And so I felt like he could have handled this a different way. I know, you know, a lot of people were in my comment section saying, well, he has a security clearance and she can't be messing up his security clearance because his job could be affected by that and this and that and the other. But listen, I've said this before and I'll say it again. A man that just leaves his wife the way that he did. And I, I had some speculations too when it came to the house situation, but I never talked about that stuff. I didn't go there because she talked about that too in the interview. And you can just listen to the full interview and you can hear what she had to say. And all of it made sense to me. Um, Not saying he doesn't have his side, but I do believe that there is some truth, if not the whole truth, when it comes to what she said and shared in this interview about the agreements that they had, what they were supposed to do and what he did not do holding up his end of the bargain because he was just a, a a guy who was not a good husband and was not a protector. And like she said, I was in, I was married, but I don't really know what it is to have a marriage because I didn't have a man that was protecting me. And that was powerful. But I'm going to play this clip and, and then we'll just continue with the commentary to go and get the, you know, get the advice that I need to turn myself in and then make an appointment to go down and prepare for this charge that I have to fight. And what was the charge for? Forgery in the third. And then, you know, Crime Stoppers said blatantly, you know, Destiny Peyton Williams forged her her ex-husband's name on a utility contract. A utility contract? Mm -hmm. So was this something that y'all had... All right, help me understand this, because this sounds real petty to me that became a, a legal issue. Explain what that means. I'm sitting in jail asking, what am I here for? Because I didn't know what it meant either. I don't have any utility contracts with his name on it. Never have. So it's like saying basically that you went and got the electricity in his name. Is that what they're trying to say? Or you got like a water bill in his name? Um... I think so, that I that I forged his name on it when I don't have 
and, and I, I mean, it's only so much I can say because yeah. we're still legally yeah. in the in the fight. And I want my attorney yeah. to be trying to box me when I get home. But um, <laughs> like, did you even bring that? <laughs> but I can say this for sure: I do not have and never have had any utility bills in his name. It's only been in my name. My question has always been like, and this is this is this is the part that grieves my heart, is that you can marry someone, be in love, not in love, whatever, but one can make a decision to marry somebody, and the marriage don't work out, file for divorce, have kids, not have kids, different people have different scenarios in the situation, but how does it get to the point to where one would put their ex in jail over something as petty as that. Like, I don't even, I don't even, I try to wonder that, because, like, even my ex-wife and I, I, I talk about this in the past, I've cheated on her in our past marriage, she don't hate me like that. Like, it's, it's not where she'll, she will do anything to harm me at all. You know what I'm saying? Even when it came time for me to get the new home that, uh, that I purchased a couple of months ago, I called up. We don't talk all the time, but I was like, hey, you want to get this money? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a nice little commission. You want to come get this check? She said, heck yeah. So she came, just wrote her name on the, because it was a, it was a new bill. All she had to do was write her name on it, made her $25,000, just like that. Go make your money. Go, go live. I don't understand how in the world do people get married and they hate, because that's what it has to come, hate somebody to the point that they will get their own son's mother locked up over something like this. Like, couldn't that have been handled in a conversation? I don't know what y'all's communication is like or whatever, but could that have been whatever it was that happened? And I know you can't say too much about it, but could that have been handled in the conversation? To say, hey, guess what? I've noticed this right here happened. Hey, can you make sure that you take my name off of this or whatever? And it just be handled in that. Did did y'all have a level of communication where that could have been done, whatever if that was the case, allegedly, um, could that have been having a conversation? Very much so. Very much so. Do y'all have it any type of a, communication with yeah, each other? We do. Is it cordial? Do you have to talk through a third party all the time? It's text. But verbally, text. y'all can't have a conversation without... I've tried. So it's just a lot of anger between whatever it is. I don't where know what it is. I don't know what it is. What what I will say is in my experience with, you know, turning myself in, I'm sitting there just like, how did I'm, we get here? I'm really in, I'm yeah. really in, I'm really in a real jail for something that ain't real. And I, all the flashbacks to the times that I picked up the phone and, and called the police about domestic situations and couldn't pull the trigger. Yep. Couldn't couldn't give a name. Couldn't say his name. Literally, like go through the process multiple times. You know, the detectives calling me, press charge, press charge, and I just couldn't do it. And I'm sitting here in real jail for something like this. And it was really a slap in the face, you know, for me. Like you protected this person for so long. You hadn't even spoke out about your abuse. You haven't even, you know, talked about the real trauma that you got from that marriage and the lack of protection that you experienced throughout the whole ordeal. And (laughs) yeah, it was it was um, it was a lot of aha moments that I needed just for my myself and my growth and and accepting things and coming to the realization of where I where I was and actually being married to someone that now seeks pleasure in your pain. I want to pause right there for a minute, but did you hear what she said? First of all, I commend him because I think it hits a little bit different for some people, maybe, maybe not, but I think it hits a little bit different when you hear a man explain how petty this could be, and I'm not saying it's not a big deal if that indeed was the case, but she said, I have never had any utilities in his name. The home was in his name, and I didn't even have access to get the mortgage statements, but I didn't have any utilities in his name. I did not forge his name on any contracts. Some may say, well, well why did she get arrested for it? Why was she on crime steppers for it? I don't have the answer to that, but to hear him say that 
this definitely could have been handled a bit different. And to me as a man, this really sounds like this is very petty and it comes from a place of someone that hates hates the person that they were married to. And that's what I was trying to say before. And the thing that baffles me a little bit is for as much people that may not care for Destiny because they don't like how they feel she treated Melody or how she treated Melody, a lot of us know that Melody's ex-husband, father of her four children, hates her. The the bogus line of people who try to say she, uh, you know, um, she's being taunted by him because he misses his family and he still loves her. He never loved her. And he has gone through all of these different routes to try to destroy her in ways that he felt like it was possible, but it didn't work. But he hates that woman. He does not love her. Destiny's ex-husband hates her. He is really not much different than Hotel, except I guess he, he pays his bills and he works. But they were friends for a reason. They were friends at some point for a reason. I don't know what the relationship is like right now. But yeah, she is rightfully defending herself and sharing that, listen, I was in an abusive relationship. I'm not saying that someone who has been in a situation that they've gone through trauma and abuse, it gives them an excuse to be rude and nasty or whatever to other people. But I do believe that it is an explanation. And when you come to the realization of that, and if you're able to, you get help for it. And she says she's been working on herself and she's been going through therapy and things like that. And I really hope that she does get it right and turns, you know, things completely around. But to hear her story of how her mom, who's still alive but not in her life, is out here on these streets, pretty much a drug addict. She was in foster care and in a group home, has what, like seven other siblings. She was with one of the siblings, a brother, and he was brutally taken out of here, shot and burned a lot, burned in a building. I wouldn't say burned alive, but shot and body burned in a building. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine. And that was her older brother, and she felt like that was the person, besides her dad, who was here to protect her, and that person is no longer here. It gives me a whole other bird's eye view and perspective on her that I can completely respect. And to hear this situation about her ex-husband and how uncaring he was, I could see him playing things up for the sake of just him being angry. And I wouldn't even want to say getting payback, but just wanting to see the mother of his son suffer. Yeah. How does that feel to to reconcile your relationship with this, with your ex husband, to that feeling? Because you still got to do life with this gentleman. You know, you have a son. You still have to do life. Your son is how? Old? He's three. Three. At minimum of fifteen more years. How do you reconcile that, and how do you? navigate this space you might not even have the answer for it but how do you what is your forethought in all right this is the reality this is where we are this is the father of my son how do we progress from this moment um i don't have the words i always say but god because prayer has got me to this point and a lot of therapy a lot of life coaching, um, specific therapy now is trauma based EMDR therapy to deal with yeah. the trauma. And because I had to go next level, regular therapy was good, but yeah. we need to go deeper because that relationship started to bring up old triggers and traumas from my childhood. Things that, you know, I wanted as a kid and didn't get, which was protection. I, I keep going back to that because I just, in some of the most vulnerable states of my life, 
being pregnant after five miscarriages and having this miracle baby and then walking out of the hospital with a $20,000 bill because my husband at the time refused to acknowledge me on his insurance. So those were, I mean, just the consistent... You said refused to acknowledge you on the insurance. Explain that to me. What are we talking about? So for punishment of not naming his son a junior, he refused to confirm me... Um, during discharge as his wife on his insurance. Doesn't it? So you, so you were stuck with a $20,000 bill. Mm-hmm. D- do you hear that? And I don't even know how that works because if you're married and you're listed as the spouse already on the health insurance, I don't really under, I don't understand how he did that but to me it sounds like he may have committed some fraud right I, I i don't i don't really know how that works i just am baffled to even hear that i don't think that she's lying about that people can try to say oh she's just doing this now because of what she's going through with him and he you know put her on blast or whatever no i believe that she did like a lot of women do cover and protect their abusers Because one, they are hoping that the the loving part of that person that they knew or saw and experienced is who they really are. And they're holding out hope that that side is going to come out, stick and last versus this side that is horrible, that is not a protector, not a defender, wants to try to destroy in a you know in a lot of different ways and that's how a lot of people especially women I will say mainly women operate isn't it crazy that the the men who I believe God really put in a place to be the protectors to be the defenders to be the providers can a lot of times based on their upbringing be the ones that can so easily let people down and and leave you. I mean, like we've heard the stories for years about men who were in relationships, married, and whatever they were going through in their life, whether they lost a job or they just felt like the pressures of home were just too much and they just left home one day and they never returned. We've heard those stories a lot. And then over the years, it has increased to the point where you you don't even have the men that are marrying the woman anymore. They're just out here getting a lot of these chicks pregnant and not taking care of the children, not taking responsibility, definitely not taking accountability. And then they want to call the the women names, call them HOEs and sluts and easy and just, you know, whatever. But you were easy with that person. And I might be going off on a little bit of a tangent, but I'm trying to make a point that it's not far-fetched to believe that this man that she was married to was these things that she said that he was, which is abusive, not a protector, not a real provider, you know? And when he was, she said she was even in therapy and the therapist said that he he will never be that because he was forced to do it at a young age and that's not what he really chooses to do so it's a sad situation but it's I believe real and as unlikable as some may see her and not be here for her I believe what she's saying is real about this man and about the relationship so for her to just have a baby and the insurance company is refusing to pay because he refused to acknowledge her on the insurance because she did not name the baby a junior. I don't think she's lying about it. Some may believe that it's not true, but I don't believe that that's something that she's lying about. I don't. While I was married. Okay. All right. Um, Explain to people what that level of therapy was. Is EMDR? What's it called? EMDR. It stands for uh, 
I forgot the acronym. Don't ask me. <laughs> Rect reticular. It's something. But they'll do... Explain what happens. You can do light therapy in your eyes and explain. It's various things. I haven't really gotten deep into the, the physical aspect because my initial therapist was remote. And she had an incident where while she was doing light therapy, her internet went out. And it was traumatizing to her because you're opening you're up. Yeah, you're just you, stuck over here. Yeah, you open up some things for a person and you can't get, them get back. back. Mm -hmm. So I now have one in person. So I get to the next level of the more uh, physical work. Because, you know, initially they have you go through, you know, start start with your earliest memory and then, you know, keep going. By the time I got to, I want to say, seven or eight, I couldn't go anymore. Like, I just couldn't take. I was like, oh. What was it doing to your body? It was just, I mean, talking about it now is bringing up stuff. Like, I'm a little uneasy. But it just started to, I mean, I started to remember things that I, I mean, completely have forgot. I remember toys that my aunt got me when I was six in a nightgown. Like, things started to really come out, and I was just like, whoa. Um, it was just a lot of trauma. I had a lot of early trauma that I remembered vividly. Are you open enough to share some of those without yeah. sending you into a spiral? Yeah, I'm open enough. Um, Pregnant pause moments. So you said that you sat in his lap. From that moment, you said he was more shy, and then... Y'all were long distance. How did y'all, what was the courtship like, the dating? Because you said y'all dated for five years. So mm -hmm. what was the intentionality back then? Were y'all just getting to know each other? Y'all just dating each other? No potential of marriage? Uh, was it a five-year situationship? Or was y'all committed in a relationship? And this is my boo. We we rocking together. Mm -hmm. What what was that? Because it was long distance. It had to stop at some point. It was long distance, but we... um we were on and we broke up and got back together a lot. But the initial, I guess, the foundation of our relationship, um, I stayed at Huntsville for about six months before I moved to Nashville. And so we were together a lot. And I watched him be a caretaker to his grandparents. And that just made mm -hmm. my heart like, oh my God, he's such a, a good family person. And, you know, even the family dynamics, beautiful family. And I think, I was so caught up in that. And, you know, always my family is everywhere. My family is Detroit, Atlanta. So I am I was the only um, grandchild out of 29 of us that moved away from Detroit. And here I am in Huntsville. It's me and my dad. And then my God family, who's a huge, they're, they're my family. Um, other than that, it's like I've always been solo. I always just moved really by myself. And so to, to be around that family dynamic just felt good. And... Then to watch being a caretaker of his grandparents and how big his heart was um, in the moment. But what I realized, it was kind of like forced on him. And it, it was like when we became a family, I was like, oh, I know he's going to be great to us because he's so good. To, but it was like, I don't know if he just got to a point where he was tired or it was just like, I've done all this work. Now you do the work. Why do you feel like it was forced on him at that, that stage? You know, you could be raised to be the golden child. And you, you know, like I've heard even him say, you know, everybody want to make wants to make their mother happy. And I get that. You want to make your parents happy. And I get that. But to the own detriment of your, your own happiness, at a certain point, um, I just feel like I got a lot of the backlash from the things that may have just been placed on him too heavily. One of the things that even happened in therapy was um, my ther the last therapist that we had said, you know, the thing that you want the most is protection and he can never give it to you because he's been raised to give it to someone, unfairly raised to give it to someone else. Has he ever been told that? Has the he therapist been the said that to his face. Oh, he was there with you. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? Did he agree with that? Because that's a great concept. That's, that's a great uh, awareness moment to say, wow, I never thought about that. If I was groomed at a young age to go be this caretaker for whoever it is, mom, grandma, whatever, then which is a great characteristic when you look at it and be like, wow, that'd be great. He could he could give me that same level of care. But if it's not managed properly, no, I can only do this and I exhaust this. It's like when you have young boys become the 
the man of the house too mm-hmm. early and you think that you get married to him, he's going to be, he's like, no, I want to get my child, my, my childhood would, back. Yes. So he was a man from the man of the house from 12 to 17. Now you're dealing with this 40 year old man that says, I want to live my I'm life. I'm still I'll be a 17. Child. Yes. And he want to go be a child again. You know? All right. You know, so to hear that they clearly both have and had issues in their earlier years and all of those different things like that. And unhealed people, broken people coming together, it it doesn't make for the greatest of situations. But, you know, with the trauma that he's experienced and him choosing to take it out on his wife, you know, in some ways, the way some things have been described, it kind of reminds me of John Gray, the pastor, how he and his wife talked about his brokenness as a young child and being a teenager and and how he has just been continuously being out here disrespecting his wife, embarrassing her, having communications with other women, having them send him having him send him having them send him pictures of their breasts and booty and all this other stuff and he's sending them cash apps and all this other different stuff like that and it's just like extremely disrespectful, you know, very weird to have this man being a pastor preaching to all of these other people. And then he's unhappy behind the scenes, doesn't really want to be a pastor, doesn't really want to be married. And, but he's, you know, sticking in there. I think he has even implied that he wanted to not be married anymore, but I don't think his wife is going anywhere. LeBaric kind of reminds me a bit like that too, where it's just like he had, some issues in his early years, he decided to, you know, to be in a relationship with her, get married, and then started being selfish and showcasing the selfishness in a lot of hurtful ways and ways that I feel is detrimental to the mother of his child, who was at one point his wife. And just hearing a lot of what she shared from the situation with her now ex-boyfriend who's now married to one of the ex-producers of Love and Marriage Huntsville. And she shared about how they were actually what she would call friends. She thought they were friends at least. And and the way things are now, and it's just like, it's a lot. The woman definitely has been through a lot. And I hope that she gets the healing and the support and a, a better outcome for her, not just for the sake of her, but for the sake of her child that she also shares with him because she said that he had the divorce reopen and wanted to have some, I guess, some stipulations added or or some different things like that. And it, it to me, it just really seems like he is not that much different from Hotel Holt. And Hotel Holt, he just is not as bright or as smart and intelligent as LeBaric is. And if he could treat Melody the same way and the the tables would turn and he was the one that was more of the breadwinner and more of the support or whatever, he tried it. Because remember, they said that he took a lot of the furniture out of the house and had the kids sleeping in air mattresses. Like, seriously, that's not somebody that loves or loved their wife, and in my personal opinion, even really loves their children. The The interview, I have to say that it was a very good interview. It really gave me a whole other perspective on her, more understanding about how she has operated in some ways. I'm not saying I completely agree with everything that she said and done. Absolutely not. But I get more of it now. I understand more of it now. And I want to hope and pray that she does get the healing and the resolve that she needs and the growth that I would, you know, hope she gets because even Melody's mother, you know, had said some things to her. And I feel like what her mom said was from a place of love, not trying to be disrespectful like Letitia's mom. I really felt like when she said, you know, you're going to need to change your attitude if you want your businesses to be successful, I'm thinking that's something that may be kicking in, you know, and in order to get a better attitude, you have to really dive deep and go to the root of the matter, or it's just going to come from a fake place. 
and it wouldn't be genuine and it wouldn't really be a better attitude. You're just putting on a front and, you know, smiling for the sake of the people that you are encountering, but it's not even really real. You know what I mean? So the interview was a very good interview. I may listen to it again and share a little bit more because it was lengthy. It was detailed. It was good. And it honestly, in my personal opinion, made me even double down on my thoughts about LeBaric and the situation with her being arrested. I know some people tried to come in the comment section and check me on it. And, you know, it's fine to disagree. We can agree to disagree. But I ain't changing my mind on that. I really feel somewhat vindicated because I was just sharing my opinions based on what I felt and what we knew. And now I feel even more like my opinion of that situation is accurate and that he is just really not much different than those guys that we've seen on the show of Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I'm talking about the Maurices, the Marcells, and definitely the Martells. Okay. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to share a little bit of that, give my beautifully honest reaction to it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section respectfully. Again, I have a link to the full interview in the description box. So check it out. Let me know your thoughts about it. Thanks so much for being here, for liking and and subscribing. <laughs> I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say bye. Bye. <laughs>